The soulless are losers who always are gonna take the easy way out. They don't care about accuracy and they're in the now. They think they get credit for trying when God only cares about doing. I'm taking a walk around Arlington, Texas. I don't usually do this, but I'm gonna take a walk because the Cowboys play here and I like the Dallas Cowboys. So let's see, I'm walking around Arlington, Texas. The thing goes, with the soulless, they are mainly about just serving their self. That's what sin is. Sin is serving self. And all the little commandments and all the little examples are just for kids to teach them about that concept. Those aren't the actual sin. Sin is the whole tone of serving self. So when you serve self, you sin. It's one and the same. Think about it. So, these things are always going to look for the easy way out and think they're guaranteed. They think they're guaranteed to be good by their own volition. They're saying self-proclamations, self-proclamations that they're good, but not really. You can't say you're good or evil. Your thought process and actions show it. And like the police discern motive, you got to discern motive. You discern the motive for someone and you can ask them questions like due process and that's good. You, there's no reason not to translate that to social relationships. So you can tell someone is evil when they self-proclaim that they're not evil, but their actions are negative, where they're trying to solve problems with aggression and negativity instead of raising themselves up and making themselves better. That's always gonna prove that it is not a person. Because God is merciful because it's too simple. All you have to do is put in the work. They can't put in the work because they don't have a soul. Satan made them incomplete because of the sins of their father. That's a second generation, third, fourth generation, where their father was evil, their mother was also evil, their father's fathers who were evil. Everyone is evil. All the way up to their father, Satan, where it just goes down where they're having a baby for the wrong reason. You can watch the first episode of Baby Human, of Baby Huey, Crack a Doodle Doo, where that mama wanted to have a baby because she was jealous of all the others with babies and took all the pills and had Baby Huey. <laughs> you can laugh that it's a cartoon, but it's fucking true. It's a true life fucking lesson. That's how the sins of the father come through. When you're having a baby for the wrong reasons, where you say, I'm going to have a baby. You can't say that. You just go through fucking life. You go with the fucking wind. So right now is revelation time. And you have to think of revelation time as uh, the worst infestation of baby Huey ever. And that's the truth. It's revelation time. Everywhere you look is baby Huey. Everywhere you look is baby Huey. Everywhere you look, baby Huey. You go to the doctor. The doctor's a dimwit chasing the ego. <laughs> Don't know anything. Like baby Huey trying to jump in before he knew how to swim. Or baby Huey trying to jump in on the front of everyone else. Don't even know what they're doing. And fuck it up. <laughs> chasing the ego. Because those medical system, those medical classes are just based on the education system. Where all you need is motivation. And they break the classes down to how the human brain learns. That motivation don't have to be a love of medicine. It could just be, hey, I'm going to finally be somebody. It'd be like Gus from The Simpsons. Hey, I'm going to finally be a winner. <laughs> this is my lick sitting in these medical classes. Yeah, they're going to be motivated as fuck because they've been a loser their whole fucking life. So they're going to be motivated as fuck. That doesn't mean they care about medicine. <laughs> Your dumbasses, they're thinking, whoa, you're making a fantasy about them. I just smelled some pollution. I'm very sensitive about that. Whew. Like, when, when those cars went by, I could just smell it in the air. You don't want to smell that shit, because that's kind of like drinking it. But I almost forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, the medical system. They're, you're making a delusion about them, thinking, shit. Ah. Thinking, shit. This is somebody who really cares, or how else can I get a degree by chasing the ego and the class is being set up for the human brain. <laughs> where, where it doesn't matter if you were a good student in school, you, you may not have been motivated. You may have had other passions. That doesn't make you smart or stupid. 
Because an idiot can become a doctor, an idiot can become a lawyer, police officer, politician. It's just them chasing ego because they're so broken. And that's what Revelation is saying. It's not zombies rising up. It's just dimwits who are dead on the inside. That's why they're walking. Duh. What the fuck? <laughs> it's the walking dead. Dimwits who are dead on the inside and are fucking up everything. So it's Revelation time now. So you got to expect you're going to see dimwits everywhere. Your best friend may be a dimwit because you weren't looking at the right factor. So you just got to admit you're wrong, which is okay. You're not God. <laughs> Only God is perfect. You look at the right factors and be, and be thankful like Abraham was thankful to break through that madness. To be thankful to have the right information and make the right decision. Because the only transgression is when you fight to stay wrong when you have the right decision. I mean, you have the right information and you fight to stay wrong. Because these things, they're, yeah, they're in human flesh, but you're not supposed to eyeball shit. That's what righteousness is. It's accuracy. It was just a bad translation. Where accuracy, righteousness, it's the same thing. You're supposed to be accurate. And you can think of it as there's a whole bunch of marbles. And if you get the number wrong, you're going to get shot in the head by God. Or you're going to get executed. Your life is over. If you're not accurate about those number of marbles. <laughs> so what the fuck are you going to do? Are you going to look at it <laughs> and, then, and then guess? Or are you going to get down there and get your hands on them and count each and every one of them? When, you, when something doesn't have a soul, they're a tool from Satan. All they can do is look at stuff and then see how others react and just go along with it. That's why the follower is the beast. That's why we can break animals and get them to work for us. That's why a dog will stand by your door for two weeks until you come back. That's why a dog is man's best friend. A man is the closest they can get. They can't get to d God, so they get to you. That's why hanger owns are the creepiest motherfuckers ever. Because <laughs> life is about accuracy. You And a beast cannot be accurate. They can only eyeball shit. Because it's a mechanical process of their eyes sending information to their brain. You can replace that with a camera sending information to a computer. <laughs> And then it's just basically looking at how others react and then going along with well, how they react so they can never be accurate because they're not people. <laughs> but if you can get down there and count those marbles, you do it. You don't just worry about what they're doing and playing up to their level or you damn yourself like Lot's wife. That's looking back. When you don't appreciate your growth, which is also put in Genesis with Noah. Uh, selling on by as they drowned. Noah appreciated his growth. <laughs> and just let them motherfuckers drown and sell on by. Or that would disrespect God if you'd have the chance to grow and you don't appreciate understanding more. That's the original sin because it's the greatest sin. To be able to have capabilities and understand, but playing down to the level of things that can't go forward. <laughs> You can think of it in evolution. We can't drag every rat, pig, and monkey with us, or we would never have evolved. You got to leave everything you know behind for God and move forward, even if you're alone. That's what the flood story is telling you. So it's about being accurate and the ability to be accurate or quote unquote righteous. And you can think of it again as getting down on the floor. And counting every one of those marbles or God is going to kill you. If you're not accurate. We're, all you, but then that's mercy. All you have to do is just do the work. Just get down there and count every marble one by one. You know how to count? They don't know how to count because they're beasts. All they can do is look at shit and see how you react. They're trying to fucking live for you. Like you're God or their mommy. That should creep you out because that's you trying to say you're ready to play God. You're ready to take this thing on and play God and mow dead when it's supposed to be an adult like you. And that's going to damn you to hell. That's the truth. So you just get down there and you appreciate God's mercy. You be accurate. You put the information in to not make mistakes. Again, God isn't even rushing you to give an answer. Why would you rush to give an answer? You just make sure you have all those marbles in a row. You know how many marbles it is to be accurate. And it will work out for you. That's the truth.